it, your early years as mayor gave rise to these to the public private public private partnership and, and ex- explain exactly what they are and why they work okay in your during so okay a, a, a public private partnership is a situation uh, where the community is faced with a challenge and government has to understand that they're just one thread in the fabric of a community and the public partner partnership reaches out into the community and and get and tries to get a whole piece of cloth uh, where people are working together uh, for the same cost in other words the city and the private sector have a symbiotic relationship i.e they can achieve their goals better by working together than doing their own thing and um, what what it requires is uh, a business community or private sector group that recognizes that there's a problem and are willing to help solve the problem and a political leader who is responsive to their request to help solve the problems or in the alternative you have a leader political leader who says to them i can't get it done i don't have the resources to do the financial audit i don't have the resources to do a a management audit of the city of cleveland i don't have the money to pay for it Uh, i don't have uh, the wherewithal to uh, create a vehicle where um, you guys can be called upon after the operations proven task force is over and we're implementing it to help us solve our problems for example uh, a partnership would be uh, 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 under the mayor's operation volunteer effort we had this little office in the city and and uh, they they call we'd call somebody and say we got a problem we had a big problem out of motor vehicle maintenance and uh, the east isle gas company sent somebody out there for over six months to work with the commissioner who you couldn't fire and by the way he was a decent guy but he didn't have the training or the background for the job so they tutored that individual uh, created a a, uh, a computerized uh, inventory of parts and so on and so forth so that that's that they helped to, to take care of that so they were there uh, they, uh for example cleveland public power uh that was the uh, city owned um uh it was called municipal light at that time puny muni and as you know that was an issue in the campaign that uh you know the mayor was fighting to save uh, uh public power make a long story short again uh, they came in and said that play, that was about ready to collapse so we needed to go out and find somebody that was really a professional to come in uh, they recommended that uh, that, we, that that all of the people and and get 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 retrained to bring them up to snuff. Uh, they recommended that we ought to change the name. You remember we were was we changed it to Cleveland Public Power right. and painted all the trucks and had our had our own uh, what do you call it uh, thing on the side of the trucks logo. a logo on the side of the trucks. So those were the kinds of things uh, that uh, that they did. Um, uh, well, I'll give you another example. Uh, we had an area in the city called Midtown from, for anybody that knows Cleveland, from downtown out to uh, 79th, just a little bit beyond it. And it was, had the highest crime rate in the city, and there were a lot of businesses that were there. And uh, we went to them and talked to them and said, you know, we want to work with you to, to, you know, to, to change the environment there because people, women were afraid to go there or being propositioned. On the street so i talked to the business community talked to a guy named mort mandela who owned premier products we formed midtown corridor what was the result we got our city police department working with the private sector police people uh, we got the business community to spiff up and landscape their places uh, we got them to uh, where, the, where they were violating the code <clears throat> to conform to the code and we used peer pressure peer pressure okay Guys call and say, hey, Charlie, your place looks like the devil. Let's, let's, let's do something about it. And we formed Midtown Corridor. And then out in the neighborhoods, uh, which were, you know, we were at war, we had something called CNDC's Neighborhood Development Corporations. I think we had about 12 of them when I came in, and we ended up with 35 out there, out in the neighborhoods, uh, you know, work. So it's, it's government working with the private sector to solve a problem. Uh, I, I guess the... The, maybe the frosting on the cake is Cleveland received three All-America City Awards within a five-year period. It's unprecedented. No city had ever 
done that before, and no city has ever done that since, okay? That was unbelievable. Second of all, uh, one of the partnerships that was created was Cleveland Tomorrow. 44 corporate executives that I said, look, you guys got to do something to help the town. We had the Chamber of Commerce, yeah, but you guys got to do something. And Mort Mandel and Delta Wint and uh, several others formed this group, and uh, they devoted themselves uh, to uh, uh, trying to find uh, funding, Primus Fund, uh, 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 a venture capital fund. Uh, they created uh, the uh, camp, the Cleveland Advanced Manufacturing, to get advanced manufacturing. They formed work in Northeast Ohio, where we started to train lower level, uh, many in the corporate community and labor leaders together, because we had a stinking uh, reputation for being a bad labor uh, relations town uh, to, do, to do that. And they did such a good job, and our partnerships were so well known, that the Cleveland partnerships became the case study at Harvard University for corporate responsibility. So that, that kind of gives you what people thought of it. Speaking of partnerships, you had a 10-year a partnership with the council president. Talk to us a little bit about your relationship with George Forbes. Okay. The mayor was at, was, was at war with, with the council president. Correct. And um, I decided that I wanted to, uh, that, I, that I had to work with George. I mean, the point is, so I, I talked to him and about some of the things that we needed to do. Uh, for instance, we had to increase the salaries of our directors because I couldn't get anybody to come in at the putrid salary that was there. And I knew council might be reluctant to do it. But George knew we were hiring pe- people. I didn't get like Hunter Morrison came to he was a big liberal Democrat, you know, but Hunter, uh, I thought, could get the job done as planning director. So he knew I was just trying to get good people in there and the politics didn't have a darn thing to do with it. My hiring hall was not Republican headquarters. We were trying to hire people based on their potential to make a contribution. And then we were also looking at, at the people in the city to see if we could upgrade them, you know, in other words, to try that to. So anyhow, we built a trustful relationship and uh, we tried to do some symbol things. For example, like his name was never on the literature in the city. I said that changed. Uh, the advertising club wanted to give me an award for the progress that we made. I said I will not accept it unless George Forbes also accepts it. And um, so the two of us worked together. And uh, I think part of the reason why also was that my son George and Mildred, his daughter, went to school uh, at uh, Henry W. Longfellow. And he knew that my son was the only white kid in his class. My daughter was one of three white girls. And I think George knew in my heart, my dad was the secretary of the Urban League, that I really had a sense uh, of to reaching out uh, uh, to the African-American community. We established the first uh, minority business development center in the country at City Hall. It was the most successful in the country, and and, and the African-American community could see it. we integrated the police and fire department because of a Supreme Court decision. That was very difficult, uh, but we did it. Uh, I made sure that uh, our first safety director was African American, uh, and uh, and my second, uh, 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 or my first was the police chief, and uh, and then the, and the second. I only had two. Uh, I had only had two. A chief of police and two safety directors over 10 years. And as you know, there was a revolving door before that. So we settled that out, uh, passed a fair housing bill that George didn't want to do because he knew he'd have a problem in council. But I said, George, we got to do that. <laughs> so we got that done. Uh, we, we, we had div- uh, div- uh, diversity training, brought people in to talk with our people about uh, trying to understand other people because we felt that there was still some uh, a tension there between whites and blacks at City Hall, and this thing really helped to smooth that over and get people to start to understand each other better, um, and, a, and a lot of other things. Uh, uh, we created uh, uh, police community relations in the districts and brought people together. Uh, in the beginning, the council, every council meeting, they were beating the heck out of the police department, and at the end, they were honoring policemen out in the district. So we tried to break down uh, these barriers that existed. And I think George knew I was sincere about doing that. And I think uh, uh, Martin Luther King uh, celebration, the city really didn't celebrate it. We ended up with the best in the country. Got the Cleveland Orchestra to play at Corey Methodist Church. You remember that? Yeah. 
and then now they play over it. That was Carry On, and uh, uh, and and the other thing was I was president of the National League of Cities. That's uh, uh, what I got, and I'm proud of. I was the only guy that I don't know if you know this. The only guy that be president of the National League of Cities and chairman of the National Governors Association. No other person in the country has ever done that. But I got to know Mrs. King, and when I was president of the National League of Cities, um, I uh, said to her, I want to make sure that once we start to celebrate the holiday, that we do it right all over the country. Because there were some cities that were a little bit reluctant to do it, as you can imagine. But we wanted to get them in the game in the beginning, and uh, we did that. And uh, I was very, very pleased. Mrs. King, I was the only mayor invited uh, to the King celebration, but for Andy Young. Janet and I went down there. We were at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And I'll never forget, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Walking down Peach Tree singing, We Shall Overcome. It was something else. Yeah. So I think George got to know that I really cared about the city and I cared about my people. And um, I, it really helped. The greatest thing, and uh, George and I both pleased about it, is when we finished up uh, the... Um, uh, the, the USA Today wrote us both up together. The two guys, this African-American uh, Democrat, this uh, Republican white guy, got together, put their hands together, and, and, and you know, led the, led the Renaissance. We, together, we did it.